Okay, welcome everyone to the Saturday issue of the Software Defined Storage Dev Room. Uh, thanks for coming. If you want to see more of that next year, give some feedback, then we maybe even get two full days. And in the meantime, give it up for Ricardo for the first talk. Uh, thank you, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the, the work we have been doing on the Ceph project, uh, about um, rewriting the, um, the wire protocol that, uh, that is used in that project. Uh, this is a, an outline of uh, what I'm going to, to share to you. Uh, we will start just to give an introduction about what is the Ceph messenger, and then we will briefly talk about the messenger API and um, show what are the, the, the current wire protocol limitations and why did we decide to implement a new one or design a new one. And then I will give some more details about the design and the implementation of the, of the new um, wire protocol. All right, let's get started with uh, what is the Ceph messenger, basically. Uh, so it's a wire protocol specification, <coughs> but it's also the, the corresponding software implementation of that, of that protocol. So when we talk about Ceph Messenger, we are talking about implementation and the, 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 the protocol specification. Uh, nor normally users don't, don't hear about <laughs> this. It's invisible to users, right? And if users hear about, about this, it's because uh, something's not working properly. Okay, and we don't want <laughs> users to hear about the Ceph Messenger. Uh, another important thing is that um, Ceph Messenger is not does not know anything about what happens uh, at with the the Ceph the, with the other Ceph components. So the, the the Ceph Messenger doesn't implement the algorithms used for for other components to uh, to that perform. Like the, OS, the operations in OSD is mons. Ceph Messenger is just the communication uh, library used to, for these components to talk between each other. So, where can we find it uh, in, in, in Ceph? Well, basically, we, we can find it everywhere. So, every, every component, every daemon uh, it has this small code that uh, is used to communicate between each other. And also the libraries, uh, the client libraries also use, um, have this code too, so that they are able to talk with other components. Right, so as I said before, the messenger is the, is the small communication library that is used to for the components to talk to each other. Uh, it, it can be used both for, uh, to, for, as a server or as a client. It's, it's, the, same, uh, it's the same code for both. And uh, it, this, uh, this communication library abstracts uh, the, the components that, that use them, abstracts the, the transport protocol that is used. So it, this, this runs on top of POSIX sockets, RDMA, or DPDK. And it, uh, it uh, gives you, um, it's going to use a reliable delivery uh, of messages, uh, and it, uh, it also gives you an exactly one semantics. And besides that, it also uh, helps it also abstracts part of uh, some temporary connection failures. So if when there are, there are failures at the transport level, it, um, it takes care of uh, reconnecting to the peers and um, making them more transparent as possible for, for, the, for the, the applications that use them. Okay, so the API, the API is very extensive, but uh, we can focus only on what's the important. So the programming model for the, the applications that use, that use this small library, uh, they basically uh, they, they connect to, to another peer by giving an address, and you receive the connection. 
So very simple. And then you can use this connection to send, to send a message, basically. And you, and you can also uh, tear down the, the connection. Uh, you can also register uh, a dispatcher where, where you can implement some callbacks that will give you, um, th that you need to receive message. So you, you, you implement a callback to that, uh, that is called when you receive the, a message, so it, which we call dispatch. And you can also have a callback when you receive the new connection from another peer. Okay. So this is a high-level abstraction over a communication channel. Okay. Um, so you and you also in the API you also take care of you have callbacks for taking care of the of the authentication um, of uh, between the peers. So uh, until now we so Ceph has a has a wire protocol since the beginning, right? The components need to talk to each other, and the current protocol was. It's still the first one that was developed since the, the beginning, so it's, it has a few years now. Um, and one of the, the problems was it's, it's not easy, easy to, to extensible to add additional uh, states to, to the protocol, at least in a, an early stage. So it's very hard. It has a, in the beginning, there's no flexibility to change. Uh, it doesn't provide that, that authenticity, so the payload of the, of, of the data that is sent through using this protocol is not possible to guarantee its authenticity. There's also no uh, encryption support. Uh, and uh, it's also limited uh, in the support for different authentication schemes. And, and to finish, it's, it, uh, it, it also doesn't, uh, doesn't have a strict structure on, on its own uh, internal messages of the protocol. So it's a bit ad hoc in the, in the way that, uh, well, it has evolved. It's a, the result of an evolution of many years of patches and, yeah, you know <laughs> how these things work. So, um, so it, it was time. So these limitations, we 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 were not satisfied, and we wanted to uh, design something from scratch that would um, that would could um, fix these limitations. And so we started uh, the design of the of the V2 protocol. Okay. Uh, and so this this new protocol, it's a completely it's a completely different protocol. Will will be available in in a different port, so, and we will still keep the V1 protocol. So, when we when we add this new protocol, components will basically talk both protocols in different ports. Uh, this has, is being this new protocol is being developed for the next Ceph release called Nautilus, uh, and um, only the user space. Uh, libraries will will talk this new protocol. Um, for instance, the, the kernel uh, modules will still talk v1. Okay. And as as I said, so Nautilus has not been released yet. So this is is currently under development, and we hope that we can finish it on time. So the the protocol is a complete redesign and implementation. Uh, it's it's designed from since the beginning to be extensible, extensible in the way that we can sh can change the protocol behavior si right from the beginning, well almost right from the beginning, and we didn't want to impose any limitations on the authentication schemes that we want to use with this with this protocol, and uh, we wanted to to fully support uh, encryption on wire. So what I'm, what I'm going to show you is that now it's a very high level idea of uh, the, how this protocol, uh, this new protocol works. So to, as a start, we will have two actors, the, the connector and the acceptor, okay? where the connector is 
always the entity that starts the connection and the acceptor is the one that is accepting the connection. And, and the protocol has four, uh, four phases. It has the banner exchange, which is the first one. Then the second, um, the second phase is where the authentication between the peers is performed. And the third is after the authentication, they, the protocol establishes a session between the peers. And, and then as soon as we have a session between peers, we can, both peers can start um, exchange, exchange, exchanging messages. So one important, and sorry about specifying this with code, but it was so much easier. Uh, one of the units uh, of, that, of, this, of this new protocol is that all, all internal messages of the protocol are, are um, exchanged in, inside these structures that we call frames. And the frame is, is, is actually a very simple thing. It's, it has a, a length, it has a type, so there are many kinds of, of frames. And, and then you have a payload, okay? And all the, the, the things we send between each other peers are enclosed in, in frames. And the same thing for when we start to encrypt the, the payload, we will basically have an encrypted frame, which it look, it resembles, it's, it's still a frame, right? It has a, a length, a, a type, and only the payload is, is encrypted. Okay, so the, the first phase in the banner exchange, the, the peers, uh, both as soon as the transport layer establishes a connection, for instance, in, in, in pot with sockets, you have a TCP, uh, as soon as the TCP connection is, is ex established and the acceptor has, has received it, uh, they both concurrently send a banner to, the, to, to each other. And the banner, includes, um, besides a string saying Ceph v2, it, it includes two very important things, two feature masks uh, that uh, are called the supported features and the required features. And with this information of what are the features that each other's uh, support and require, we can uh, decide what to do from, 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 from that point onwards, okay? So, as soon as uh, the, the banner exchange finish, we can actually, our protocol can change, okay? So in the future, if you have new features on the protocol, we can, we can change uh, the state machine from, from, from here in, okay? So, after the banner exchange, they also, um, they also exchange the information about who, who, what kind of entity they are. So if they are OSDs or Armands or our clients or MDS or the manager. And, and they also uh, tell each other what is the address of, of, the, of the peer. Okay. I will not go into details why <laughs> we need this information, but that's how it works right now. Uh, so after this, we go to the, to the second step, the authentication. And the authentication is started by the connector. So the connector says to the acceptor, I want to, to authenticate, and I want to authenticate with this method. And this method can be, can be none, so I don't want to perform any authentication. Okay? Or it can be using CephX, which is what uh, we usually, it's the, the system we use for, for authenticating uh, the Ceph components. Or, or can be any other method that we add in the future, like Gerberos or something, something else. Uh, we also uh, specify at this point what, what do we want, what guarantees of security we want uh, after the authentication regarding, for instance, if we want the messages, the payload to be encrypted or just signed, or we just want some integrity checks using CRCs. Okay. So, the connector sends this message to the acceptor, and the acceptor, acceptor looks at what the client, what the connector wants, and it, it, it might reject. So if, for instance, if the connector wants no authentication, the, sir, the acceptor can say, uh, I, don't, I don't support that, and, and give the, gives the connector what are the methods that I, I support. Okay. And, and the connector has the possibility to send again 
an auth request message to, to the acceptor. And as soon as the acceptor receives and accepts the auth request, it, it can ask more, um, more information from the connector, depends, which is, depends on the authentication scheme that is, is being on. And this, this new information that the, con the, the acceptor sends to the connector, asks the connector, the connector can also uh, replies to the acceptor, and the acceptor can again ask for more information. So we can have several round trips uh, at this point if, if the authentication scheme uh, requires it. Okay? And this was one of the, the limitations that we had in the V1 protocol, which only one round trip were uh, well, no, it was not easy to extend to, to have more round trips. So the last message is the, the entity that, uh, se that finishes this is the acceptor by sending an auth done uh, message to the, to the connector saying, okay, the authentication uh, is done and, and we, can, we can proceed. Okay. And from, from this point, if, if we have chosen to to, that we want our frame payloads to, to be encrypted, then everything from here, session establishment and message exchange is, is, is encrypted. So session handshake, it's, it's actually really simple. Uh, so the, the connector sends um, some information that identifies itself and the acceptor uh, looks at it, and if everything is okay, it just replies, uh, saying, uh, it, it gives I its own information. And um, there's also the other case, which is when some peer is actually reconnecting. So imagine a case where the, 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 there was a failure while the, the peers were communicating, and um, the, the client can, the, the connector can actually reconnect to the acceptor. And at this stage, instead of sending the whole information, <coughs> he just sends, oh, I want to reconnect to a previously existing session. Okay. And the acceptor will have the job to, to, to see, OK, yes, there, I, I know this session, so you, I'm going to reconnect you to this existing session, and you will continue onwards. Okay. So very very simply, very explicit um, protocol. So after the session is, uh, is established, uh, we go to the, to the message exchange. And at this point, actually, there's no more a, a connector and an acceptor. Both are peers. Both can send messages concurrently in any in any order, and they need, and then the protocol also handles the the hacks uh, of the of the messages, the acknowledgments. So you send, they send messages. The the acceptor can piggyback acknowledgments in other messages, and if there's, if the peer is not sending any message, we we have a, a, a special acknowledgment message message to say I already received uh, up to that point. So this is uh, the high-level uh, overview of, um, of how this new protocol works. So, what, so we, for in this protocol, we need to guarantee, we, we give the guarantee for, we can give integrity, authenticity, and confidentiality uh, on, on the messages using the new one-wire encryption uh, feature. And in integrity is is given by um, CRCs in in the frame in the frame header, and also CRCs in the in the message payload. Uh, authenticity and confidentiality are are given. Y you only get this for the the payload um, of a frame, so tags the kinds of uh, the frame length and the the. Um, the frame tag are not um, signed or, or encrypted. And authenticity is given by, um, by message authenticated codes using uh, SHA-256, at least for now. <laughs> but uh, actually, this protocol, we can 
that we can specify multiple uh, authenticity schemes and, and protocols or even multiple um, encryption modes. Okay. And confidentiality currently is, uh, is given by AES uh, encryption. So the, the source code, if someone, um, if someone wants to, to look at it, uh, it's currently, so you have to clone the project and uh, it, you have in this file, it's the, the implementation of the, of the whole protocol. You also have uh, a file called protocol v1 where you can see the, the v1 protocol. And uh, and you c you can also see oh it's cut but you can have also read the specification draft of this protocol uh, in the in the Ceph docs page. So future features for for this um, well we we would like to add more uh, kinds of auth authentication protocols supported especially Kerberos. Uh, one thing that we have been talking but uh, still don't have plans for it is the connection multiplexing. So if you want to collocate, for instance, many OSDs in the same process, uh, uh, we want to avoid having actually physical, many physical connections per each OSD for the other peers. And we want to reuse the same connection uh, to the other side. So for that, we need to uh, multiplex it. Uh, and, well, this is an extensible protocol, so uh, new ideas and, and contributions are, are welcome, uh, basically. And, yeah, we're, we're done. Yeah, uh, so the question was, what uh, types of uh, AES encryption do we currently support? Um, that's a good question, because I don't clearly remember what we are currently using. Maybe CBC? CBC? Uh, no? The initial implementation used CBC, but the yeah. current draft, that's probably going to be a novel feature of AES CPS. Yeah. So it combines the encryption and the signature of the And it's faster than the last So I'm, I'm just going to repeat <laughs> briefly what <laughs> Sage did, uh, said. Uh, so yeah, we initially were supporting CBC, uh, but uh, now we're we're changing it to AES GCM, GCM uh, which takes care of uh, signing an encryption. Right. So that's yes. So, uh, the, yeah, the, the question. <laughs> so the question was, um, how does the the Ceph messenger actually uh, is is currently working? It's uh, like exactly. so the, the big difference is because the, the Rabbit MQ you have a central. Right, right. And so, 
so I in this here, uh, what you do, we, we have a, we only, we use non-blocking uh, uh, sockets, non-blocking connections, and we, we rely on the, on the operating system event system to be notified when, when we are allowed to read, w when there's something to read on the, on the sockets or when we can actually write. Uh, so it's, and so every every daemon that uh, when it instantiates the the messenger, it instantiates this this mechanism. It it creates the uh, if it's binding, it creates a socket for for accepting connections, and it uh, changes to non-blocking mode. Asks the operating system to start to receive notifications for for that connection, and that's uh, how it works. Right. Well, I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So the question was, if with this new protocol, um, the the Ceph messenger is is now a good fit to be used in a public network uh, for for the components to communicate in a public network. I really don't know what to answer to that question because I I don't know what um, are the 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 threats uh, that. That, that, that we can, right? That, that was not the target, okay? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if I, I would. I don't know. Okay, it's I don't have enough knowledge to to answer that question from this point of view. Yes. Um, so why add the overhead of encryption if you can't use it over a public network? Well, that's uh, so. The the question is. Why adding the overhead of encryption if we cannot use the Ceph messenger on the public network? Well, you might have some requirements, security requirements that all data that is, so imagine you're, you're storing user data in, in the data center and you have some requirement that the data must be always uh, confidential because you might have some very curious sysadmin that uh, starts seeing, uh, starting sniffing packets in the, in, the, in the network, so inside people. And, and you have the requirement that you must guarantee that user's data is actually, it's confidential and no one can actually see. So for the only way to, to achieve this is if you actually encrypt all data, even in a private network. So the, the, the question is, if, um, if the messenger can, can be configured to, to, def to, to configure it in a way that we can specify if we want in a secure connection only for some links, yeah. right? The problem is, how do you characterize a link? That's what I'm struggling with. <laughs> Right, yeah. 
then those buckets you can control with. Oh, the that's the, the MS bind over the big between two. But they're, they're new settings yeah. for whether you. Yeah, that's you what you may open. Yeah. So, but overall, the thing is that currently we can only distinguish between type of peers to to change the configuration. So you can say that between yeah between your OSTs you have this configuration, and but it's with the type. It's not individual um, and uh, instance of the demands. Uh, which one? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> please go ahead. Mm-hmm. So that everything that access the RVD block storage, for example, it gets encrypted, but not the replication in between the clusters. Mm-hmm. Yep. So from this point of view, that would make change uh, uh, sense to, to have this option. Yes, and and that you, you that you can do because you you can you can say so every client is required to. Uh, it only works if we encrypt uh, if it accepts to encrypt the the, the messages and. For uh, other other types, you you say no. You you I also allow to not to do that. So. Um, Hello. So the <laughs> the question is. Uh, why didn't we decide to to also encrypt the frames tags uh, in in the protocol? It's a good question because <laughs> why didn't we do it? Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So Sage is saying because I was not uh, present when the protocol was was uh, designed. <laughs> Uh, but at the time, we were thinking of um, implementing uh, uh, the, mu- the connection multiplexing, which I talk about in the future features. That, that was supposed to be implemented in t- uh, with the new uh, protocol. And at that point, we, we needed uh, to, there was no way to, if we encrypted that information, we probably wouldn't be able to distinguish some, some messages. So. Yeah. Um, they they need they need to know who c- from from whom comes the right. Unless you do encryption on top of encryption, but that way we are you are actually doing a SSH tunnel. So yes. So you mentioned plans to add uh, Kavanos uh, authentication. So can you give some guidelines on? <coughs> Uh, so the the if one has the choice. so the the question is if we if we have in the future when we have support for more authentication protocols like Kerberos if we have some guidelines to to help uh, the admin to choose which one uh, to use um, I'm sorry but I, I'm 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 not I'm not that n- I don't know <laughs> so so much about this uh, this uh, auth- Security protocols to 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 answer at this moment that question. Um, uh, well, actually, SFX is, is was based in Kerberos, so I, I don't think there, there's too much of a difference between choosing the current SFX and and Kerberos. It's just a matter of the if you already have the infrastructure, everything use Kerberos, and then you can actually leverage it in in the SF instead of having one more security protocol to manage and manage keys and manage access. So the, the rationale for, for having Kerberos as, as a next step is because if you have that infrastructure already, 
it will uh, ease you a lot, right? Because you already have the infrastructure to manage it. Okay. So. Thanks, Ricardo. Thank you.